Addressing hunger goes beyond what is found on the plate. We need to understand how food is produced and what are the incentives to produce food. We need to understand the enabling environment for farmers to produce food more sustainably and also produce healthy food. I see three major challenges for food and more broadly food systems. First, a growing number of people eat too much, too little, or the wrong type of food. In other words, governments are faced with the triple burden of malnutrition, which is a huge challenge to address with limited public resources to health. Second, scientists have produced enormous evidence that the current food systems are not sustainable. Agriculture and other land uses are responsible for nearly 25% greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time, small farmers produce the majority of the food, yet the socio-economic conditions for farmers have not improved fast enough. The farming population is aging, youth are exiting the sector, income inequalities need to be addressed to make the agriculture sector attractive again. What does that mean for policies? A paradigm shift is needed from producing abundant cheap food to producing more diversified nutritious food. We need to create a fairer, healthier and more sustainable food system. According to recent estimates, subsidies and other forms of support to agriculture account for nearly 600 billion US dollars per year and these also encourage agricultural practices such as monocropping or overuse of fertilizer that often have negative consequences on the environment or human health. We need to stop oversubsidizing a narrow set of products that are not necessarily healthy and support more diversified foods such as vegetables, fruits and legumes. We need to shift the focus of policies to focus on other types of foods. To address the hidden and visible part of hunger, we need to diversify our diets. Biofortification can help address some of the most acute problems of malnutrition, but in the long run, we need through policies to promote more diversified diets. New food policies need to rely on market, but we also need to regulate food markets in the interest of societies. Market forces can help promote healthy and sustainable diets. The starting point is to understand what people are eating and to also understand the drivers of food choices. Research can help. There is evidence that a growing share of the consumers are willing to pay for sustainably produced food and also healthy food. However, this is not true across income groups. The poorest need to receive specific support from policies to help them access healthy food. Policies need to reintegrate the real cost of food in the production function. That means the market value needs to reflect the cost of water, the cost of degraded environment, in the unit cost of food. Internalizing the real cost of food may mean that consumers will have to pay a higher price for the food, but it also means that farmers will obtain a higher price for their product. So that may help farmers become more competitive. This will also help small farmers operate in the market on a more level playing field. The role of food value chains needs to be acknowledged. At the same time, the way value is creating within these food value chains need also to be better understood and we also need to find the mechanisms to make the distribution of this value fairer, especially for farmers. Achieving zero hunger can come through three interconnected and complementary pathways. One, better technologies, including varieties. Two, better policies, and three, better capacities, institutional and individual capacities, especially in farming communities. 
Because most of the food problems still happen in the global south, we need to recognize the important policy trade-offs. It is very challenging for governments to simultaneously achieve higher level of food production, prosperity, meaning higher incomes for small farmers, more equitable distribution of income between and within agricultural households, sustainable use of natural resources, and healthier diets. Policies need to help establish priorities and help also organize the transition in sequence.